Welcome to episode 90 of the Twig Snapper podcast. Today we're joined by our first U Sports guest, Cassie Dells, Ontario Tech women's hockey team. Cassie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How's your summer going? It's been going good. Just off season training now. So, do anything fun or are you just training the whole summer? I went to Cuba. That's that pretty fun. fun. <laughs> that was pretty fun. I got nice and tan, you know, but yeah. now uh, I work every day. So, it's not that fun. <laughs> no, no rest for the wicked, as they say, you know. Nope. But Cuba sounds like fun. Uh, you know, oh, how yeah. long were you there? Uh, just a week. Yeah, still, that sounds like a week I well know, spent. <laughs> It was. Yeah. But, you know, back to the grind after that. You got to get ready for hockey season. And like you said, working. And, you know, that's what summers mm -hmm. are for. As soon as you get out of high school, there's really no summer anymore. It's not a thing. Oh, nope, it's no. I That's what I learned. It's, you know, I looked forward to summer and then I'm like, oh, man, like, got to get a job. <laughs> yeah. then, no work every day. And on the weekends, I feel like I feel like my parents, honestly. And now I now I get it. <laughs> Yeah, right. Exactly. A couple summers are working and you're like, geez, I finally understand. <laughs> yeah. So you played uh, your junior hockey up in Canada in the PWHL and also in the OWHL. So I guess kind of just talk in a, in a whole about your junior hockey experiences. Yeah, for sure. So my, I kind of like bounced, you know, everywhere. So I, was, I started off, um, I'm from Oshawa, so I played Oshawa, like, growing, like, all the way up, and then I moved to Etobicoke, Toronto, for a midget double-A season, and that's kind of where um, I started getting, like, called up, like, as a, you know, alternate player with the with the, our junior program for Etobicoke, and that year, like, they are super good, like, it was such a great um, program, and then I got to play three games with them, and then Mississauga reached out. And I got to play a couple games with them. And then uh, that's kind of how I got into like junior and how I started like contacting with like coaches and stuff. And then I decided that COVID year when COVID hit, I went to Aurora, so Central York Junior. And it was kind of like a hectic year as like everybody, you know, would say. It wasn't fun, but it yeah. had to happen. <laughs> but um, and then after that year, it's super tough, like I said. Um, and I decided to go back to Mississauga where I got my first point with them when I was call up. So a lot of my teammates, my old teammates from Etobicoke went there. So I was like, Oh, like that's perfect. Like I'll go play there. So I played there for my last year and it was probably like one of my best years of like of junior hockey. It was, it was so fun. Everybody got along and like our team, like their team kind of chemistry, like on the ice was just not unreal, but like it was, it was pretty good. Like, you know, not all teams yeah. have it. And it was just overall like so fun. And I got so much um exposure with like Darcy and like Mississauga. I did with like Central York and Tobacco too, but that, you know, my grade 12 year was just it was so awesome. Yeah, that bouncing around. I mean, that's that's tough when you're young. You're just trying to figure things out. You're trying to develop as a player and you gotta bounce mm -hmm. around, move around. And I mean, was it tough to to go away from home too? Yeah, it was. At first, I was super nervous when I got, like, the offer to go to Toronto because I didn't know anybody. It was, like, a fresh start, but I'm, like, in a way, like, oh, like, that that actually might be nice for me, you know, I'm, like, change the scenery, change the girls, and they do say hockey's better in the GJHL, so, and it, it kind of is, so I do have to agree with that, yeah. but um, it was a really nice change for me, and I was super nervous at first, like I said, but I got used to it and then like I said bouncing around it's hard kind of like when you're that young I was only like I was 16 you know turning like 17 playing like with all these like older girls and stuff and so it was really nerve-wracking because you're trying to find your place but all these different teams are like cool come play with us this weekend like come practice with us and so I was just kind of trying to get a feel of things you know like what team like should I be interested in but it was it was a really good experience for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, all the experiences that we get nervous about usually end up being good for us. I mean, things <laughs> that are that are hard and moving away and everyone always says it, whether it's, I guess, with hockey or with a job, you got to do that stuff when you're young. You got to bounce around. You got to go away from yeah. home when you're young because that's when you can handle it. Once you get exactly, older, yeah. 
you know, you want to already have those experiences and they're all good experiences. I mean, we're nervous initially, but like you said, it, it goes away eventually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Turns into a good thing. So with, I guess this is a kind of a couple of questions molded into one, but in, you know, the juniors you were playing up in Canada, do most people mm -hmm. go on to play U sports or do they go to the NCAA down in the States? And then like with that question, with your recruiting, were you only looking at youth sports teams or were you also talking to NCAA teams? Yeah, so usually a lot of girls that play in junior here go to the US. That's like, I'm going to say like 90% like of like our goals okay. is to go to the US because like hometown girls don't really want to stay, right? They want to go <laughs> and like because hockey's like bigger in the US like with the colleges and universities it's, like it's true right and yeah. so you don't see a lot of girls staying now because like they kind of think about like the like the national like development team a lot of them pull from the US teams and not a lot pull from U sports so it it sucks that way so all the girls want to go and like want to yeah. like like experience the big schools if you know what i mean and like you see like a lot of the girls that really um want to like work like in Ontario and stay you'll see a lot of them stay it with youth sports like for like job purposes or like if a school has a certain course or something because the curriculums are totally different right yeah that's another thing that like we had to think about but for my recruiting process um I talked to a lot of U.S. schools at first because that's where I was interested. So I'm like, I don't want to stay home. <laughs> Home's boring. <laughs> I want to go. And um, so when I turned um, 16 on June 14th, that was the day that the rule they made that they could contact you. So I had two calls that day. I had one with Vermont and Holy Cross the same day. And that was like my first like ever call with d1 schools and I was, just, I was just like oh I don't even know what to say like what questions do I ask <laughs> but it was I'll say like it was a tough process like it's fun but it's like not at the same time because you're so stressed about like what like they're asking you what you want to take what do you want to do after like where do you see yourself and you know as a 16 year old you're like oh like I don't really know <laughs> I'm so young I how am I supposed to know what I want to do with my life yeah hard decisions to make when you're that young you don't know you got your whole life and you're like here figure it out right now yeah a lot could change but um <laughs> like over like over the year um I kind of started making like pros and cons lists I'm like okay like maybe I should like look at staying home like not start staying home but like staying in Ontario and like because people tend to count out you sports like OUA so I was like okay maybe you know I'll talk to some Canadian schools and see like what's going on so I talked to D1. I talked to a lot of D3 just because you never know what doors you could open. And like, mm -hmm. you can learn a lot from talking to coaches, but near, like when I got to Mississauga, that's when I kind of knew I'm like, okay, like, I don't think the U S is for me. I don't think that's going to like bode well. So I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm going to look at, um, U sports schools. So I started taking a look at Canadian schools, went and visited a few, talked to a lot. And then the last one I talked to was Ontario Tech because <laughs> I'm from here and I'm like, oh, I don't want to stay in Oshawa, man. Like, <laughs> But um, I knew um, our coaches, uh, one of them taught me how to skate when I was little and one of them was um, my trainer when I was in like Bantam. So it kind of made sense for me to stay here. I felt comfortable and they knew me. But yeah, I talked to a lot of different schools in the process and it was, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah. And then it all came full circle and you ended up right back where you started. <laughs> I stayed home. <laughs> yeah. You wanted to leave so bad. And then you're like, wait, maybe it wouldn't be so yeah. horrible to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> so you keep talking about, you know, how everyone wants to leave, right? They want to go down to the NCAA, the big school. So, so with mm -hmm. you sports, I mean, is there a big following like fans? You get a lot of people at the games, the pack, the rinks. Does it depend on what school you're at, where you're playing? You know, some schools pack them and some don't. Yeah. So honestly, there's not a lot of fans. Like it's not even comparable really <laughs> to any school in the U S because you see like, like boys like Michigan, like Wolverine, like they pack their stands. 
it's not like that here <laughs> like you get your family and your friends and like some student sections but like my rank's pretty small so we don't get a lot but it, it's pretty full all the time because it's small like I said and it's a lot of family and friends but I know some schools like they do um like schools that are close together do like rival like rival series and they pack like pack the barns and it's fun but like there is certain ranks like TMU they play in the old Maple Leaf Gardens where the Toronto Maple Leafs used to play so it's a big nice rank they have some like for like homecoming they'll do like big crowds and like Queens and like Western but you don't get a lot of fans which sucks but like girls hockey like you get used to it you know (laughs) so but yeah there's nothing like the U.S. yeah so what about the competition like you said 90 percent of the people you play juniors with leave to go to the U.S. so is the competition still pretty decent in U sports and like you know it's still good hockey there's just it's just different it's honest it is very good hockey and I can guarantee you that some of the the U sports teams could beat some of the D1 teams. It's it's just a matter of who goes and who stays, right? And like who you pick like for your team and like who you recruit. But I can't I can't diss it cuz it is it is great hockey. It's rough, like the pace is fast, like they're bigger girls, but and you know, you get well you get playing time. So a lot of the girls that go to the U.S., like some of them don't get playing time because their rosters are so big. Like our rosters typically aren't like that big. Yeah. They are, we have extras and stuff, but it's it's still great hockey. Like I wouldn't count it out like like I used to, like now that I play here, I'm like, oh, like it's, I respect it like totally. So sometimes that's what it takes. You know, people diss leagues. Like I had a, a guy on he played club hockey at Adrian and now he's playing in the in the federal league the, the FPHL and he always dissed it being just this like low level <laughs> professional hockey because it's like the lowest tier but then you start playing it and you realize like oh there's actually guys with a lot of skill here like, sometimes that's what it yeah. takes you like you get this mindset because you're on the outside you don't really know mm-hmm. and then once you start playing you're like oh was I ever wrong <laughs> right yeah and like some schools like over recruit or don't see like girls that are and some people blossom like late I guess like or get really good late right and so they don't have the time to go to the U.S. or whatever. or maybe they're just really good and they want to stay so there's a lot of like hidden gems I guess in youth sports yeah you get that in a lot of sports I see it all the time in the U.S. with like D1 football like recruiting obviously is a huge thing and then always there'll be like yeah. this crazy prospect and he'll pick some like smaller school over all the major schools and everyone's like what whoa it's like yeah well, you know just because you're good doesn't mean you have to go where everyone expects you to you can yeah. throw a wrench in the system and go somewhere else and exactly. I mean, yeah. same kind of deal so <laughs> is it mostly just Canadian girls that play U sports or do they recruit you know girls from overseas or are there are girls from the u.s that come up or is it pretty much all just canadian girls it's it's a lot of canadians uh you tend to see a lot of uh girls who go to the u.s and then transfer back for like a fourth year like a fifth year or like like rmu we had an RM, rmu girl come back because like their program got cut that year yeah so she came back um but we have a girl from Australia on our team. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, she doesn't have an accent, though. <laughs> she lost that. <laughs> oh, but I know. Um, <laughs> you don't see many. It's mostly local girls. So there's like, there's I don't even think there's a U.S. girl. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing about playing in the U.S. You talked about like girls go down. They don't get playing time because there's bigger teams. But you think about it, you've got U.S. girls. You've got Canadian girls. They got girls from Sweden and germany yeah, and they, you know denmark yeah. norway all there you know they're recruiting all over the world so you yeah. got people coming in all over competing it's a yeah. lot harder to opposed to like you said you got a smaller team pretty much all canadian girls you might get better playing time and yeah you got to look at what you value more a lot of people it's yeah. like okay do i want to ride the bench or get little playing time and just say i played d1 hockey Mm-hmm. Or do I want to play in a smaller league, but I'm going to get to play a ton. And that's what it's all exactly. about. Like you got to, what well, do you value? That was, yeah. That was my thing. It's like, okay, this or that, like, and I wanted to grow as a player. So I'm like, I'm not going to put myself in that position because right. that's, you know, not playing. Like you go there for hockey. And then if you don't like the school, then it's off. <laughs> yeah. So, 
I guess some people though, you know, just the status means more to them. Like they say, yeah. Hey, I was a D one athlete. Like there's plenty in the, in the States D one athletes that probably ride the bench that could just tear it up in D two or D three, but oh, they, yeah, for sure. they could just play and they'd be MVPs. They'd be unreal, but they'd mm-hmm. rather just say, Hey, I'm on this team, which yeah. hey, if that's what you want to do, good for you. Whatever, <laughs> yeah. whatever floats your boat, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> for real. so i mean one of the most exciting parts of everyone's career is their first goal and you got your first college goal this year was it an exciting goal was it you know some people they tell me they're like yeah it was so cool it's a cool goal other people are like it was my first goal but honestly it was so boring it was like <laughs> like i was excited because it was my first but it, it didn't look cool like, what was yours like Oh, I was so bad. <laughs> it wasn't like cool at all. It was an empty letter. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, it's but, still a, it's still a goal. You still got I it on mean, the stat sheet. <laughs> I had good aim because I hit it from our zone. So hey, right there you the go. Middle. There's a lot of people who miss the empty net. You're like, is it gonna go? In? Oh no. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not as no. easy as it looks. <laughs> no, it's not. It was like we were playing against York University. It was like five minutes left in the third and we were winning and it was five on four and our uh, forward just kind of won it back and our D played it over to me and I'm like oh uh, what do you want me to do with it <laughs> you know like <laughs> it's like five like your girl is coming at me and I'm like oh well, I don't want to give it back to her <laughs> so I didn't even like plan to hit the net I kind of just I flicked Fired it, in the it down. oh yeah yeah to like kill time and I'm like oh like man like, that's in the middle <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna go <laughs> in and yeah, I went in and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, it, it, nobody, unless they listen to this or you tell them, will ever know that. They're just going to look at the stat sheet and they're going to say, Cassie they scored a goal her first year. <laughs> exactly. That's all they're going to know. They don't have to know the other parts. You don't have to go into the details. Just No, I don't. I'm just glad I scored my first one, got it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, you get the monkey off your back and you, you can yeah. just kind of relax. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, it wasn't the best season for you guys overall. You look at your record, you were 10 and 22, but I was looking and you had 18 losses that were two goals or less. So I mean, you guys were in like every game. Yeah. You, you, you think about that. If you won those games, you would have been 28 and four. Like, you know, you guys would have been unreal. So you're, you're right there which yeah. obviously sucks, but it's also got to give you some like confidence for next season. Like, Hey guys, we were this close next year. Let's get over the hump and let's win those games. Yeah. Kind of, kind of like to fire up your butt. Like honestly, <laughs> yeah. like for yeah. the girls that are returning. Cause like, like you said, like we're close, but like just not enough almost. Like we just got to, we just, I guess didn't find that extra little like push, but oh man like so many games we were so like so close and it's so painful when you're playing those games because like U of T such a good school such a good team like powerhouse we only lost them a couple times 2-1 and it was like their power play goals like they killed us because they have like the number one power play and so it's like yeah like we locked in on those penalty kills we could have been tied and then you know OT like who knows what could happen but we were definitely in them. So it was kind of like not heartbreaking, but like disappointing to yeah. to lose a bunch of those when we knew when you knew like you could have won. But it's hard mentally too. Yeah. You, like you got that like gnawing at you, like what is wrong with like why can't we? We're yeah, like we're so some, something yeah. that we're not like getting in the coaches, you know, you can only coach so much. <laughs> and right. And so like right. we do we just have to do it. Like we have to execute it. But this year, I think it'll help us like gain some confidence to know that we were that close. And it's an accomplishment when we played those top two teams, U of T and Nipissing, to only lose to them by a certain amount, just to know that we we were there and we were. Yeah, you're 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 in the same realm. There, it's you know, it's not like they're way up here and you're way down there. It's like no, we're right here. We yeah, stuck even, with them. Yeah, even though they're like smashing other teams and like U of T and. Um, you um Nipissing made it to like the finals and we're like oh like that looks good on us because they're from our division <laughs> so, right from the other division so but yeah it was it's tough but I'm sure it'll help us this coming year oh definitely you said it lights a fire up your butt and you figure yeah. it out and you know it gives you that kick for next year you <laughs> makes you want to win even more and 
it, like it gives you the confidence to know like you could be 10 and 22 and those 22 losses you could just got cranked every game and then it's like right? okay well, we suck but <laughs> you didn't get cranked every game no. so <laughs> you don't suck <laughs> no exactly <laughs> You got to look at, you know, so many people just like look at a record and they're like, oh, that's a bad team. It's like, well, actually, mm-hmm. if you go into it, you look at the details. You watch those games. Yeah. Right, you watch the games. You look at the stats. You're like, they're, no, they're right there. Right yeah. there. So that's what next year's for. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you got to have goals and now you got something to build off of. Mm-hmm, for sure. So what do you guys do on, you know, roadies, a road trip? Do you guys like do anything fun on the bus, bus karaoke games, or does everyone just like put in their headphones, like watch a movie and like, don't bother me. Honestly, everybody like, everybody's so different. Like some bus rides are like different, you know, like they're never the same. I think the furthest we go is, is North Bay, which is four hours. That's that's such a, that's a sucky drive though. North Bay you've probably never been but no no i haven't I've only, been to, only been to canada once and it was <laughs> niagara falls so yeah yeah <laughs> where everybody goes right exactly but no north bay is nothing there's nothing there like oh it's so bad and to drive four hours on a coach bus are so uncomfortable but most of us use that time to do school yeah. but half the time i like to finish my work before so i could just like mess around to be honest right, right. you want to have like, a good time exactly it's the bus but um i think we used to play uh there is this game where you could all it was almost like not charades but like you would like like cards against humanity but like on the phone and so we'd all like connect on our phones and <laughs> they're like a oh it was like caption that picture that's what it was okay we send in like a dumb picture and everybody would have to caption people would pick the best captions and then our coach Desi puts on the worst movies ever oh my god like like what like the oldest movies and he's not even that old well okay but this is because they're old doesn't mean they're bad like can, can you name a few of these here now i'm curious i honestly like, can't because i can't no, even I had okay no what is old them. like like are these movies from like the 60s or these 80s movies like what's yeah, your like, definition of old like 80s Oh, geez, those are some of the best movies. <laughs> to, to you, maybe not to. Uh, maybe they're, are they, are they U.S. movies? Are they like crappy Canadian, like 80s movies? Like, what, oh, they're, what are they're they? They're definitely like, they're just crappy, they're just crappy movies. <laughs> and we'd no be big like, stars, no like, oh, hey, it's. No, I don't know, like, because it's a CD player. I don't know where and who told them to put these on, but we're all like, dude turn it off please yeah, I, and then, and I really want to know what these movies are like, i'm curious <laughs> i'm gonna find out and i'll tell you 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 better like we, we got to get to the bottom of this here talk about this. Out, <laughs> are they actually bad movies or do i'm just saying yeah <laughs> right or do you have no cultural taste i don't know it could I, be that. Could. I don't know but um but yeah we never did uh like rookie karaoke on the bus we would do it at, we did it at like the rookie party. So like, it was kind of, you know, you did it, but like we had to move everything on the bus, speakers, bags, sticks, coolers, and the rookies had to sit with each other while everybody else got their own seat. <laughs> so bus buddies, <laughs> but um, a lot of people on the way back, like our bus was super chattery on the way back, but like it was dead quiet on the way up. Cause like everybody's like sleeping and listening to music, but on the way back our bus would get super hot and like it's not fine like humid hot and like sticky and so there'd be girls like on the floor like watching like tv like on their phones on the floor everybody's like congregated to the back of the bus and like we're all talking about i don't even god knows what and the coaches are up there like dead quiet and we're all like making a ruckus but like i don't know bus trips are always fun like they're always entertaining yeah those are memories that like they're small and they're stupid but they're ones you never forget and they're like the best times like it's one of the most fun things about being on a sports team is like the trips going to away games and like hanging with your teammates like that's one of the best parts Mm -hmm. you guys also have pretty cool jerseys i love the colors like the colors they really vibe well together it's it's a good mesh they're like uh new york islanders colors yeah 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 and it's, it's a good them. mix yeah. it is they used to 
when back when it was UOIT, so it's it's Ontario Tech University now, but back then it was UOIT. And it, we had the, we still had the dog, the Ridgeback, but they were blue. They were dark, dark blue and like black and white jerseys with like stripes. And it was like an actual like dog coming like out of the jersey. And then they changed it. And honestly, these ones are way better. <laughs> like, like you said, the colors just go together. Like the colors are so crisp and clean. And like the royal blue is just like. And that's the most important thing for a jersey is like the colors have to blend. Like, you gotta, or or they have to be good colors. Like, there's some yeah. colors it's just like those colors know, are just like, boring. Like browns, like oh, you know, like Brown yellow, University. I'm not like a fan of the yellows either. Yeah. Like oh no, there's some yellows. Like uh, I went to Michigan Tech and we have black and yellow and I don't know. I feel like most of our jerseys weren't awesome. Like like mm-hmm. Iowa. I like Iowa's yellow. Like Iowa's yeah. yellow is awesome. But like our, yeah, their our yellow, yellow is kind of. Nice. Like, yeah, yeah I, know. I know. Yeah, the Michigan Tech yellow. It's like like it reminds me of Bumblebee. Like honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Our I think the tech basketball team played a U sports team in like an exhibition or something like that. I, I don't know who they played, but I'm pretty sure they played a U sports team in an exhibition. At there's some, some point. good there's some good uh U sports um basketball teams. So yeah, it's it's interesting because I feel like down in the States nobody talks about U sports at all. Like not even a thought. You know what I mean? Like no. nobody. I, there's Not probably a ton, ton of people who don't even know what it is. That's what I was just say. I bet you a lot of people have no idea what like the OUA is, <laughs> which sucks. But well, I mean, they're missing. They're missing out. You exactly. know, <laughs> you guys are like a diamond in the rough. People yeah. who find you, they find a gem. They're like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Otherwise, they're just missing out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and you guys got sweet jerseys, so they're really missing. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, sweet unis, you know. Yeah, that's one of the best things. Like, even if your team sucks, I'm not saying you guys do. I'm just saying in general, <laughs> if your team you sucks, like you guys look good at least. <laughs> you gotta late look good, play good. <laughs> hey, there you go. You got one check, and you got those close losses. So now you're gonna check the play good and yeah, winning, and it's all gonna come. Up. Keep checking them off. <laughs> So, being from Ontario, are you a big Leafs fan? Big Toronto fan? Like, crazy Toronto fan? I saw your eyes get big. Yeah, I knew you were going to ask this question. <laughs> okay. Are, finally, are you are you clinically depressed? Like, is honestly, it is it a hard life? It's got to be a hard life. Like, I'm just so used to, so used to the pain. <laughs> well, you guys don't suck, though, until you get to the postseason, and it's like, oh, <laughs> Like, we got this team. We're gonna win the cup, and then you lose to Tampa. We got this team. We can do it. You lose to Tampa every, again. Every year. And every then this year you finally beat Tampa, and then you lose to Florida. It's. Like, I know Florida out of out of all teams. <laughs> the eight seed that ends up, you know, tearing. In the final. Yeah. Yeah. It blows my mind, but yes, I am a Leafs fan. My whole That's... family Leafs fan. I used to I... actually like the New York Rangers, oh. but. I know. <laughs> yeah, there's something about Rangers fans. Where it's like, uh... <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Uh, there's actually a couple of fan bases like that. Montreal fans. Uh... Oh, don't even. It's so bad here. They're horrible. Oh, they're so bad. I don't know what it is. Have you we'll seen how boys. horrible they've been to that David Reinbacher who got picked? I mean, he's getting like they're, they're threats. I mean. I was listening to I don't know Chicklets or or some you know podcast and they were like give the kid a break he didn't choose to get drafted like he can't pick where he goes he got drafted you're like yelling at him we wanted a forward like okay you want me to like switch positions like what do you want me to say yeah like sorry are you the GM I don't think so yeah <laughs> yeah no, no, but Montreal fans are horrible you would hate it here then because you either get Toronto fans or you're getting Habs, Toronto man. fans aren't great either because you guys think you're going to win the cup every year and then you just... <laughs> our, our media is our media's so harsh too everybody gets like ripped apart and I just feel awful but like I don't know they deserve it sometimes like I love the Leafs but sometimes man like <laughs> there's some there's some big trades coming up I think we're gonna trade Nylander so yeah it's been looks like it's in the works 
You know, I, I think, well, there's a lot of problems with the Leafs. Goaltending's been a huge one, for, and they, they haven't solved that yet. Like, since, like, how long ago? <laughs> yeah, Jack Campbell well, sure wasn't it, and the whole Matt Murray thing, what a disaster. I mean. <laughs> I know, like, I'm surprised, and then, like, fire Keith, like, honestly. Yeah, it's all, it's all, I don't because you look at the team, you're like, you got Austin Matthews, and, Mitch Marner and Morgan Riley and like they got studs up the wazoo these guys that can just I mean Austin Matthews is going to be on track to be the best American hockey player ever if he keeps it up you got him on your team and you can't you can't win guys can't like I don't know breaking records and I it's I feel so it's so true what they say that like you would have the best team like written down like on a piece of paper but like chemistry wise like I don't know. It's just not there. Like, I don't know. Well, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't feel bad to look at the Oilers. It's the same thing. McDavid, Dryside, all these guys, and they can't. They're unreal. They can't, they can't like, get to the end, though. I know. It's like all Swedish, but no finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. You're right. You got to be happy with the off season, though. You got some fun. I know a lot of them are one year deals, but Bertuzzi and Domi, Klingbird and Revo. Those are, I mean, those are like those are good picks. I didn't expect oh, yeah. the, uh, the Domi or Bertuzzi like at all. Oh. I saw them. we got rid of you know Shen. Like he's a tough guy, so it kind of sucks because we'd have like no tough guys. And then, but now you got Revo. He's a tough guy. Yeah, we got rid of yeah, we got rid of Bunting. <laughs> and I saw all these signs. I'm like, oh man, like okay, like we'll yeah, see. like. Bertuzzi's gonna put up oh he can put up points and he's kind of oh, like yeah. a gritty player Domi he, he's like sneaky good you know he, he's yeah. been on like seven teams in his career but he's sneaky he just can't sign a long-term deal but he's really sneaky good like he's yeah and then you got nice Matthew nice like when he yeah. comes back you know football, oh yeah he's he is dirty oh my god he's so yeah. good maybe this is the year it's the least <laughs> year we've been saying for 10 years it's the least year <laughs> let's hope i mean we yeah. got the first round so now you gotta you know i feel like and i've heard this on a lot of podcasts but they basically like this year they built the team just to beat tampa and like and that was like hoping that that uh, dubis would like save his job but no you after so many years of disappointing it wasn't yeah, it just no. you win the first round and you're safe it's like you you got to win the cup man or you got to like make it yeah. to the conference finals or you got to do something win one yeah, no. you can just win one, and yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. It will be, yeah. I actually had a Maple Leafs legend on. Didn't post the episode yet. It was just recorded last night, so it'll be posted here soon. But Rick Vive, I had him on. You know, Austin right. Matthews just broke his record for the fifty-four goals. Wow. So you know, Maple Leafs legend on exciting stuff. That's yeah, that's really cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, gotta gotta hype up the episode, right? <laughs> you gotta put that out there, <laughs> right? When you when you get people who are, people who are legends of the game, people gotta listen to it. I mean, these those yeah. are the guys that have the best stories, and they've yeah, been no, there so and done true, that. Yeah. Like they they've lived through all of the, well, and like hockey in the eighties was so different than hockey now. Oh, like, yeah. oh my god, it's a different sure. game. Oh, for sure. So what do kids in Canada do for fun? <laughs> Play road hockey. No, I can't yeah. think. It's hockey uh, all the time. We never stop ever. It really is. No, I don't know. I like growing up, like I played hockey pretty much every day, every weekend. It's, it's pretty chill here. Like not, I don't know. Like we just, a lot of us play outside. Like my generation, like the 2004s, we all played outside. Like yeah. ball hockey, like pond hockey here in the winter. Oh my gosh! Like everybody, it's like everybody's yeah. friend. Every it's like it's, really it's, it is literally hockey. Hockey's life. I mean, yeah, hockey is life. Like you'd sleep hockey. Like everybody just joins joins the games. Everybody's everybody's pretty friendly here too. So makes it makes it nice. I totally get the like hockey is is life thing. I I live in the UP. I grew up in the UP. So I, like if I go down south, people think I'm from Canada because like the UP <laughs> accent's kind of close. I go you from Canada. I'm like no, I'm from the UP, Michigan. Like they like get confused. We're just we're close enough where it counts. Yeah. But like ho- hockey's life here for so many kids too. It's year round. You've got everything always. That's that's what kids do. Yeah, you play hockey. Yeah. 
like you said, but, the accent. I I love when I um I used to go to Boston for like hockey tournaments, like Beantown in um in the summers for like rush yeah. hockey. And you know, you get to play with girls from the US and their accents we'd always they'd always make fun of us because we're like we're like hockey and they're like hacky. And I'm like, no, it's hockey. An O, not an A. And like we'd always compare and they're like, what do you guys call a locker, a locker room? We're like, what's a locker room? It's a, it's a change room. <laughs> and so oh, it's geez. Funny to see. it is then, a locker room. It is there oh, are lockers. Locker well, <laughs> It's what well, where do you draw the line? Everyone grows up in like high school, you have literal lockers. But then like once you get to yeah. college and like the pros, you don't have lockers, you have stalls. You have stalls. So is it it's a locker room when you're young, but then and when then, you're older, it's a changing room. Okay, yeah, I agree. And then there's maybe then there's flooding the ice, because we say flooding, and then Americans say cutting. And I'm like, Oh, I've never heard that. Really? Yeah, I thought I was oh, flood the ice. That's, yeah, all the Americans maybe are like, we're just close enough to Canada where some of that stuff like comes down. Yeah, and know. then I heard that where did I? Oh, I saw it on Bar Down. They call like clear tape like Saco. And I'm like, calls it Saco. <laughs> Apparently <that>? they do. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I've never called that in my life. I'm like, give me some clear. <laughs> yeah. I heard your accent a little bit. I think you said process, but you said it different. Yeah, process. <laughs> yes, process. Do yeah, you say both... do you say sorry? <laughs> yeah, it's not sorry, like sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's so hard. It, it's hard because people I get these like downstate kids would come up to tech and they like make fun of me and I'm like I, I don't know what you're talking about I think I sound normal I, I don't know what you're talking about they say say big and I'm like it's big and they're like egg big like yeah. making fun of me <laughs> and we're like really like, bag like I don't know I, I feel like we really pronounce like like the o's like you're like our o's and the a's I feel like are yeah that that's where it is yeah it's no, it's easy to hear though it is well, in the U.S., you get so many different accents. You got the Southern people, and they're like honky tonk accent. You got the Jersey Shore people with like oh, I love Jersey those accents. It's it's just a mess in the U.S. with different <laughs> accents. And then you got all these Canadians coming down saying sorry. I mean, yeah, they're like they're like what? <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a big. You take a pot and like throw a bunch of people in there and see what you're gonna get. Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what do you, you watch movies, TV, not at all? Yeah, I'm a big, um, big movie person, I'd say. Not What's your really... favorite movie? Oh, man. And that's Probably a hard all. question. I know there's different genres. Okay, all time, Mamma Mia. Gotta go with that. Oh, yes. Like, yes. That's so the top, good. that's the top three movie for me. It's not my oh, favorite, yeah. which, it's top which three. Which favorite? Though. Top Gun Maverick. Love oh. that. And I saw it in theaters. I was like, oh, it's so good. And I watched it over and over and over. And then that, honestly, I, I like Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, better than the first one. I really oh. do. Yeah. I think it's so much better. I like the first one's great, but mm -hmm. and I, I don't know. Have you seen Mamma Mia Live ever? No, I want to. Oh, it's so, so good. You've seen it's it live? So, I saw it in London. It was oh, so I'm jealous. Good. That's what that's what got me hooked on it. I was like, oh, ah, really? we could we it was either Mama Mia or Wicked. And I was like, Wicked sounds pretty oh. cool. Like, I want to go see Wicked. And my whole group, I was with a school group, and they were like, Oh, we all want to go see Mama Mia. And I was like, that sounds stupid. This girl's trying to figure out her dad. Like, <laughs> what this is dumb. <laughs> yeah. And then I went and saw it. And I got back to the hotel room and I was like listening to ABBA and like dancing. And I was like, This is awesome. Like, I'm hooked. Every like the bars here, everybody plays ABBA. So <sighs> That's like my Mama favorite band. Mia. That's my favorite. Yeah. I love ABBA. Love they're ABBA. Great. They're great. They're fantastic. The Swedish supergroup. I mean, they're just. Yeah. And whoever had the genius to take their music and turn it into a musical. Just I know. Like, like, kudos to you, man, because like, that's a great idea. But you made Top a masterpiece. Gun. Top Gun. I don't know. I f I'm going to say this. I feel like this the second uh -oh. one's much better than the first. Oh, okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I don't know. Like, People our generation is saying that and then like my yeah. mom's like no you can't be the first so i'm yeah. like okay but you watched it like 40 times <laughs> over 
over and over and over. You could memorize the lines because you were in high school when it came out. Like, of course, you're going to say it's better. Yeah, I I argued with my dad when I first watched it because I I think I ended up watching, like, Talk on Maverick, honestly, now probably, like, six times. Oh, it's so good. And I'm like, I'm like, Dad, you gotta see it. It's so good. Like, the music's good. Like, the oh, like the phenomenal. Story. Tom like, Cruise is just awesome in it. You know, I'm like, there's humor. I'm like, no one dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spoiler. And then, yeah, and then they watch. Well, it. actually, that's not true. That's not true. Oh, Iceman. Yeah, that was that was hard. That was heartbreaking. That was so sad. Yeah, like that was sad. That was that was that was hard. I, feel like I mean, there's, Maverick there's just- lost everybody. <laughs> Spoiler alert for anyone who's never seen it, but if you haven't seen it now, are you living under you a doing? rock? I mean, what yeah, what are you doing? Miles Teller was so good as Goose's kid, too. Oh, he was. He, he was like so good. did it perfectly and he played yeah. it perfectly. Yeah. Rooster. What a what an awesome movie. Look at that. Mama Mia and Top Gun were green on, on these I know. awesome movies. Fantastic. Good <laughs> stuff. All right. Now now here's the next one. Music. All right, okay. We agreed on movies music is everyone you know what does everyone listen to in canada what's the what's okay what do you listen to i guess it doesn't matter what anyone else listens to what do you listen to i listen to a lot of 2000s music like throwbacks like justin timberlake tupac 50 cent i'm like a big like nelly Furtado. okay big, like i feel like i was born in the wrong like wrong generation because i like that's that's how i feel because i'm yeah. big into like 2000s late 90s but like pop punk and like emo music like yeah i love jamming out to that stuff like watching like the american pie movies and like the music i'm like oh, i would be so cool to like go to a one of those high school parties with like that right? kind of music like, you feel like you're born in the wrong time period you're like our music sucks like yeah the way they the way they dress like oh it was just but then like I don't know, I don't really care for the pop music that comes out now. Like it's it's so boring. No. And then, then there's rap. It's... Like I love you rap. Like rap? Do you like yeah, new listen... rap? Yeah, I listen to it all the time. Hmm. I'm a big rap guy. There's old rap and there's new rap, but like the it's old, way different. old rap slaps like it's a banger. But there, there's like really old rap too. You like go to like the early '90s and the late '80s, and it's so weird. It doesn't even sound like rap. No, it it doesn't. Like it's NWA just... or like stuff like that is like. Like that's like the original like roots of rap, but it doesn't doesn't sound like you know pop smoke or whatever. Who, I don't know. Whoever. Oh yeah. <laughs> what about what about country? Are you a country fan? I don't like modern country. I like classic country. Oh, I I don't I I'm not I'm like a firm. I've said it many times on this podcast. Like people are like, oh, I like Morgan Wallen. I'm like, he, he's not even really a country singer. He's like half honestly- country. He's like a hybrid pop singer. Like. I don't even care for him. Everybody goes like crazy over him. Like, oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it either. I like, I, I like try to listen to his music, but I can't. Yeah. It's I like all it. just too. It sounds the same. It does. And, it, and it's just like, it just sounds too much like pop where it doesn't even like some of it doesn't even feel different. It's like, I thought it was like, it doesn't even feel like a different genre anymore. It's just yeah, all meshed I like, together. Yeah. I don't know. Old, I don't know. Old, like Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean, Dirk Bentley, like their old songs. I all yeah, Luke I like Luke Bryan can rock out to some Luke Bryan. Like after that, that's when country got bad. Like after Luke Bryan yeah. stopped pumping out the hits, you know. Shania Twain. Oh yeah. Love Shania Man, Twain. I feel like a woman. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's. She's pretty good. There's uh oh, what's that? She's got that one really mushy one. Uh like you're still the one or something. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's that, yeah, there's some I'm like oh I'm- <laughs> I don't know. It's overplayed, but like I listen to it and I'm like, yeah, this I don't know. It's <laughs> catchy, it's not bad. I don't know. I'm all over the place with music. I don't really like rap that much. Yeah. I haven't listened to much new rap. Like I was big into post Malone for a while. Okay. But I haven't listened to any of his new stuff. I actually, I probably haven't listened to Post since like Goodbyes. That was yeah. Like- I don't know. I feel I liked his old stuff like way better. Like I'm a big uh, I'm a big Drake fan. All Canadians are Drake fans. We love Drake. Like love him. And then yeah. Twenty One Savage. Like Mingo is like oh they're all so good. Drake but- is not good. You don't like Drake? <laughs> no, I don't. 
Oh no. I couldn't even name a I can name one Drake song. I think I can name one Drake song. Okay, what well, one? The Toosie Slide. Is that what it's called? Or something like oh, the Toosie. Oh. That's the only Drake song I know. That's it. Really? Out of all of them, that one? I don't know any other Drake songs. Oh the oh no, it's like left foot slide. Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. I don't know any other Drake songs. Come on. <laughs> Can't come to Toronto then. I don't know if I want to come to Toronto. All those Leafs <laughs> fan everywhere. Oh, I think man. it would have been so awesome if Austin Matthews left for like the Coyotes. <laughs> I thought he, I thought he was gonna. To be yeah, honest, I, would, I love that kind of stuff. Like when there's like a sports team that I hate, like Tom Brady leaving the Patriots. I thought that was the greatest thing ever because all these Patriots fans were like, oh, crying, and the and then Aaron Rodgers leaving the Packers. I love it. It's so good. Are you are you a big football fan? Yeah. Pretty big football fan. Do you watch the CFL at all? Or is that just like non-existent? Oh, no. I don't. I don't NFL? Yeah. Do you watch college football, NFL, all of I it? I do, yeah. We're, What's uh, your team? We're big, big, big Bills fans. Josh Allen. Stefan Diggs. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I don't have anything. I don't have a problem with the Bills because right? they're better than the Pats now. Like, they're a team that can beat the Pats. Anyone who can spank the Pats. It's, you know, you're a good team in my book. I'm a Titans like, fan, so uh, we've had King Henry, but I think uh, our ship has sailed. Team's yeah. gonna suck next year, and then we're gonna end up trading him and going into a rebuild. That's what I think is gonna happen, and it's sad because he's he's unreal. I mean, he, yeah. he's just so fun to watch. But yeah, he is fun to watch. No, he... I don't have any teams that are fun to watch right now. All my teams suck. Actually, I don't really follow the NBA. But I guess the Celtics are my team, and they're pretty good. They're, so, yeah, they're pretty good. But I'm a huge Ducks fan, and we absolutely suck. We're so bad. Like, there's a promising future, Zegris and Troy Terry and, like, wow, Leo Carly. But... Hey, you got to be mad that they didn't pick. Fantilli? Yeah. I don't know. I There's a lot of people who like Carlson. I, I am, like, I was stunned. I watched, I was like, what? So was I. I was like... Everyone's saying this kid was going to go number one. If Bedard wasn't there, he'd go number one in most drafts. Yeah. Freshman Hobie Baker winner, Jack Eichel and Paul Cree are the only other people to ever do that. Like, come on. Mm-hmm. Then you draft this Carlson kid. I was... I'm I, No, like, disrespect. I'm sure he's great. Like, Yeah, I hope he is. Me, but I was I was like, no way. <laughs> they, they skipped up. I think yeah, everyone... way to go. Why don't you just give Fantilli to Columbus? You know, give him to you know Line A, Goudreau. Know. Like they need him. Like, huh? Yeah, Kent Johnson like... and like all these guys they got, they're gonna be stacked pretty soon. I feel like loaded. Anaheim could use him like with like the young guys and like you know they all played college hockey. It was all it was all rigged anyway. We should have <laughs> had I was the Blackhawks. You know they gave it was rigged. Or... Poor Bedard, man, going to Chicago. <laughs> he would have had so much more fun in Anaheim. Go out to Cali with Zegris. Boy, those two would have been a pair. They, oh, they would have been a good duo. I would I'm have so- called this a playoff team if we got Bedard. I was like, oh, we would – right there. Yeah. I feel bad for him, like Chicago. <sighs> yeah, who does he have to play with now? Nobody. Taylor Hall. A bunch of old guys. <laughs> Corey Perry, like, oh. He's oh, yeah. Years old. Well, like, oh, boy. Corey Perry, man. <laughs> Oh. Like, I'm sure you'll learn a lot from him, but it's not like he's going to dazzle you with his skill anymore. Like, he's old. He's probably going to yeah, hear his he bones is. popping when he gets off the <laughs> bench. You know? <laughs> but yeah, it's a sad, sad life to like – when I was in middle school, the Ducks were great. You know, we made the playoffs every year. We always lost yeah. to Nashville, but it was still like we were competitive. Well, like, when you had um, Getzloff, right? Getzloff, Perry, they were still like not yeah. bad and – Hampus Lindholm, Cam Fowler, yeah. like the group of guys, Gibson. Now he wants to leave. I mean, I, I really like him as a player, so I'm torn. Like, I want him to have success in his life because, you know, just like watching interviews, he seems like a really down-to-earth, like, awesome guy. But then again, like, he's been a duck. How do you let that go? Even if we do suck, you, you don't want to. Yeah, it's hard. It's tough. It's tough to to cheer for yeah. losing teams. <laughs> well, I don't I know. know. <laughs> well, you guys are making the playoffs at least. You made yeah. the playoffs how many years in a row? Like that's something. I mean, you got no hope after that. So I guess I know it's just like oh, okay. 
I just I just take the playoff run. Like I'm just like I don't care. You a Raptors fan? I am. Um, Ra- championship not that long ago. That was... They did, and I went to my first ever Raptors game this past year, and it was so fun. I didn't expect it to be that fun. Like our it gets Toronto. Like everybody loves the Raptors. Everybody loves the Jays. Everybody loves the Leafs. Like we're a big like sports city. I feel like Toronto is, but. It's the funnest game I've ever been to. They had smoke flying. Like, their intros are sick. Like, everybody has their flashlights out. Like, just, like, the vibe. And, like, there's dancers everywhere. It's just... it's Basketball games are so much fun, I feel like, because there's music always going. The so NHL fun. needs to take some notes. I know. Why don't you I play, was, like... I was watching some... Or listening to some podcasts, and they were talking about, like, look at these NBA guys. They're signing, like, three-year contracts, 100-plus million dollars. You got NHL guys. It's like, oh my gosh, you signed a $9 million deal. Like that's so insane. It's like, what? (laughs) Like 9 million a year? Guys are making 30 million a year. Like they make so much more money. It's crazy to me. What is the NHL doing wrong? You know, you got to work on your, there's some places like Vegas. Looks like it'd be so fun to go to a Vegas game. Like they put on a show. Then there's other, other places where it's like, like, what are you doing? You got to figure your stuff. Like you got to (laughs) figure it out. You got it. I yeah. don't know. The NHL is going to... We see Dana White destroyed the NHL. He, like, yeah. ripped him a new one, and it's like, well... He's, he's ruthless. He is. <laughs> <laughs> the NHL, he's like, no, this NHL sucks. Yeah, he's marketing like, no is thing. horrible. I yeah. mean, I don't know. Hockey's a weird one. It's a weird one. Like, people who love hockey... Absolutely love hockey. Love it. And you got yeah. other people that are like, what is hockey? You're like, yeah, I don't watch do hockey. Like, what? I just turn it on like a background. Like, you know what I mean? So I bet there's so many people you'd ask them, who are the greatest athletes of all time? They'd all say like Tom Brady and they'd yeah. be like Kobe and, and Michael Jordan. They wouldn't say Wayne Gretzky. They wouldn't even know, or, or, or Mario or these guys, Yager. I mean, most yeah, people I probably know, know Gretzky, but. Yeah, because, like, he's such a common name, but, like, none of the other guys. But, no, no it's different. For, like, football, like, NFL, like, it's such a business. Like, yeah, even, even college football, like, Penn State, like, the whiteout games, like, create, like they get the same oh, yeah. amount of fans. The big house, Michigan. And, you know, I'm a huge Notre Dame guy. I guess I got that going. Cool. I mean, Notre Dame football is pretty good. They, I mean, yeah, so I got that, but like, yeah, the Notre Dame, Michigan, Alabama, Tennessee, all these colleges. Georgia, the it's Bulldogs. Nuts. They won. It's they won. Nuts. There's, there's like 15 different bowls. Like there's like the Rose Bowl. But they're all, yeah. They you all know, like, there's so much wow. money in college football. It's crazy. College basketball too. March Madness. So much money. I yeah. had a, a sports administration class last year at Tech and the athletic director taught the class and she was saying that March Madness pays for everything. Like yeah. they take the money they make for March Madness that pays for everything for division three and everything for division two. And then like most of the division one, they make so much money in that one month. It just pays for everything. Yeah. Well, like think of all like the brackets, like everybody does brackets for everything. Like I did fantasy football, <laughs> so yeah. I can't really talk, but yeah, but, like, it's fun. You know, it's fun. Betting on these brackets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I see too too well i was smoking everybody five and oh but and then i I don't do like money for fantasy because it's so up in the air some guy gets hurt your season's over you're done you're like oh i got i I had the number one pick and then you're like yeah i had prescott as my as my qb and then broke his hand and i'm like well now i'm screwed (laughs) yeah rip You know, that'd be like in hockey, if you drafted McDavid first overall, you're like, I got this in a bag. He's going to put up insane points. And then he did hurt. Your like team is just garbage now. And you're like, great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know, people who put the money in it. There's those like years where those leagues where you can like keep guys like throughout the years. And you like have yeah. them for like years. That's like, you pick a guy and what, what if he like goes downhill? Then you like wasted your like money on keeping that guy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's crazy to me. It is. It's crazy. I want to bet on sports. I see it, and I'm like, I can't I trust. Wish I, I could can't trust it though. I just no. Because you look at it, and you're like, geez, I would have picked that. I I, I would have done. I, I would have picked that. Hey, you're but like, I don't oh, have the guts. It, I don't I have the guts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
Like, yeah. You know, and the people who like pick the craziest bets in the world that like put it on a thousand dollars, like yeah. Anaheim's gonna win the cup next year. You're like, are well, you like, nuts? And then the like, people like win that stuff. Like, how do you? Well, like, there's no way I'd bet money away for that. I'm like, these no. are like people that like you're betting your money on. Yeah, maybe like the last, you know, the cup. I, you know, people who just like hammered Vegas in the betting because it was like, okay, yeah. Chuck's hurt. Like, this is pretty obvious. That is a pretty for sure thing. You could bet on it. You'd win a little bit of money. But mm-hmm. some of this, like, there's got to be somebody who put money on Florida, like a lot of money on Florida, and then they lost. Oh. You're like, yeah, I feel like people got like so hype after a second round because, like, even like my family and I were saying, we're like, we're like, they're going to cut. Like, yeah, we, we said it right away after they beat Toronto. We're like, okay, they're going because, like, yeah. it's always the teams that you don't expect it. And then for them to lose, I was like, eh, like it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't want Vegas to win, though. I really didn't. No, like I don't know. I I'm. I think you got to earn it, and they haven't been in the league very long. Like, there's so many teams like Toronto. I feel like it'd be better for the league to have an original six team. I was say, yeah, the original six that team. hasn't won it yet win it. Like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's good know. for the league that Vegas won it because like Vegas is such a hot spot for like media and like uh you know. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like there's other teams that deserved it more that than Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Like like Toronto. As much as I don't love Toronto, like I don't have anything against Toronto. There's a yeah. lot of teams is like I can't stand Tampa at all. I don't Not really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously you don't. Know. Yeah, I know it. But then you had Boston <laughs> who I can't stand Boston either. Just like blew it. Like Yeah, greatest team ever. Records broken. Yeah, records. Broken. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I because my team did brackets. And so I think I had in the end um Carolina and the Oilers. Like in like like one of the finals. Cause I'm like, oh like, let's go Oilers. Like, come on. But then I had Boston in like the final, like the, the cup yeah. game. And then they lost. And I'm like, all of us were like, well. We just lost because so, every single person had Boston in the finals. Cause like, there's no way that they shouldn't have lost, but yeah, no, it, I loved it because I, I, I like underdogs. I'm a big underdog unless it's yeah. my team. If it's my team. Obviously, you know, I hope that no yeah. matter what, but otherwise I'm an underdog guy. I always like you the gotta, underdogs. You gotta respect the underdogs. Yeah. I look at the Kentucky Derby. I'm like, Oh, that horse that's got, you know, 400 to one odds. I'm going to take him. <laughs> Not that guy who's got 10 to 1 odds. Who he's yeah. gonna win. I'm going to pick this. He's got a cool name. He's an underdog. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with hockey. I, I love the Florida thing. I wanted them, you know, eight seed to win it. Awesome. You mm-hmm. know, March Madness, the 16 seeds. Love it. Yeah. You know, it's no, it's not fun when you know who's going to win. You got to have that. I know. It makes it less exciting. Yeah. That's just, that's part of the fun of sports. You got to yeah. have upsets. You gotta have upsets. Yeah, that's right. Right. We, nobody wants that scripted, like, this is how it's gonna unfold. The league probably does. <laughs> yeah. They probably like want it like Boston to win because the league wants that, but nobody else does. Exactly. They're like, we make the money if they win. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. All right. Well, I think I've taken up enough of your time here talking about all, all kinds of stuff. We're going on a huge tangent about, about all kinds of stuff, but it's good. It's awesome. This is this is the best part about podcasting. You never know what kind of a random conversation you're going to go off on. Yeah, it's great, though. Yeah, it is. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. Yeah, of course.